In this video, we will be learning how to apply surfacing to an object, what the shader tree is all about, and how to easily position bitmap textures. First off, we're going to open the scene we saved at the end of the last video using the Open Recent menu option. Just select the file and it opens. To ensure I don't overwrite the last one, just to be safe, I always start out by renaming my scene, so let's press the keyboard shortcut Control shift s for Save As, and go into our Video 4 folder here and save our scene. I like to increment my files with numbers at the end, so I always know which is the latest version. And by versioning files like this, it's easy to go back to something should the need arise. In the last video, I showed you how to move objects from one scene to another. Another way to build up a scene is to download objects off the internet or get them from a web at a 3D model repository. The most common format at these sites is OBJ. It is just a different file format, sort of like the equivalent of a 3D text format file. Broadly supported, but not very robust. Moda supports the importing of OBJs, so let's add in a coffee mug using the import command. In the file menu, select the import option and navigate to the video 4 folder and select the basic coffee mug file and press the open button. This pops up this dialog box that has some options specific to OBJ format. We don't really need to concern ourselves with any of these settings as our objects are very basic, so let's accept the defaults and just press OK. Our coffee mug is in the scene now. It imports in the center of our scene like the coffee pouch did. So this time, to make it easier to see, let's turn off visibility of the other items in the items list. If you look here at this first column, there are these eye icons here. If we toggle the icons, the objects will still be in the scene, but they are disabled temporarily, and they're not getting in our way. They are also hidden from rendering, so this is a good way to speed up a test render when certain objects are no longer needed. To get a little closer to our mug, let's switch out of camera view to the perspective view. Another way to access view options is by using a pie menu pop-up. Pie menus are collections of controls and settings combined for convenience and ease of access. They are called pies because of how they are arranged. We can open pie menus using various keyboard shortcuts. For the view options, it is under the control spacebar combination. When pressed together, this menu pops up and you can spin the mouse around and select one of the choices with the left mouse button click. Choose Perspective, and that jumps us from the camera view into a view we can navigate around without it affecting the camera's render location. Let's navigate a little closer to the mug. So the mug comes in with no surfacing. It's defaulting to just plain white. To make it look like a coffee mug, we need to give it a material. Surfacing simply describes what an object looks like, what color it is, and if it's shiny or dull. For solid objects, surfacing is applied using a material. This is the instructions for how objects look, broken down into the basic component parts. But before we can set any material attributes, we first need to tell Moto where to apply them to. The way surfacing is applied is through tagging. A tag basically links an object's surface to the surfacing instructions in the shader tree. Let me demonstrate. Making sure our target item is selected, click directly over it in the main viewport. We'll be working on a component of the item, its polygons, so let's make sure we're in polygon selection mode. Click the polygons mode up here. Like before, we need a selection to direct Moda to know what it is we want to modify. Selecting polygons is done by clicking and dragging over the object surface like this. This is called a paint selection, as we are painting, in a way, over the surface. However, Having to drag over every polygon like this would take a very long time. So of course Moto has a lot of nice shortcuts to make selections of these types easier. One of them is to simply double click on a surface and it will select every polygon connected to the one that is clicked, like this. With our selection defined now, we will actually create the tag. Press M on your keyboard to do this. This opens the Assign Material dialog box. The tag type you are assigning is the material tag. You can think of M as in material to help you remember the key. In here, we have to designate a name for our material. I'll call this one our coffee mug outer. And let's give it a color. How about dark gray? 
If we click right on the color pane, it opens a color picker that is likely more familiar and allows you to change the color definition. Select the color you want and press OK to accept it. The other options here define a few other basic aspects of a surface. The diffuse controls how much of the light is bounced from the surface, basically how bright or dark the surface is, and the specular setting controls how shiny or reflective the surface is. We don't really need a deep understanding of these for right now. We know we want a very dark gray surface, so let's accept the rest of the defaults and press OK. The assigning material command is kind of like a macro that automatically does several actions for you, beyond just applying a tag to the polygon. Let's take a closer look. By now you're familiar with the layers of the items list. The shader tree works much in the same way using a similar layered approach. If we switch to the shader tree panel, we can see all the surfacing in our scene so far. Each one of these named layers holds the instructions that describes each surface. We have the coffee maker, and under imported shaders here lives all the instructions for the foil coffee pouches we imported. Here at the top is the material we just created, coffee mug outer. If we toggle the preceding arrow, we see it's made up of two layers. On top of the polygon tag, it is these two layers that are also created with the assign material dialog box. The top layer with the red and green circle icon is called a material group. This is the link to the surface tag we applied to the coffee mug. Anything that resides within this group will be applied only to that mug object. Under the material group is the material item. If we select that layer and look at its settings here in the properties panel, we see the dark gray color we designated is set right here under the diffuse color setting. If we ever need to change that, this is where it's done. The rest of the settings we can actually leave at their default values as they're pretty close to what we need for a coffee mug. Let's press F8 and see our progress. The mug looks okay, but it's still pretty plain. Let's add a logo to the mug and make it more interesting. Adding pictures to a surface like our rocket logo is done using external bitmap images. These images are often created in another application like Photoshop or Illustrator and saved in a format Moto can read. Our mock client has supplied us with such a logo already so we can import it into the scene using the shader tree. Under the Add Layer button, we can add additional layers to our tree. Select the Image Map Load Image option, and this pops open a Load Image dialog box. Let's navigate to the Images folder at the top and load the Rocket Circle logo image. This places the image right under our coffee mug outer layer, so the image will be applied only to that surface. Next, we need to tell Moto where to place the image. This is done with the settings of the texture locator. Toggle the preceding plus mark here, and we see this layer. This is the texture locator and its settings define how a texture is applied to a surface. For image maps, this is controlling its position, orientation, and size relative to our object. We also need to define what is called the projection. If you think of a movie projector and how it projects onto a screen, then you'll have the basic concept. The projection defines how the texture map wraps to the surface. So let's first set our projection type to planar, just like the movie projector expressing the image onto whatever surface it is facing towards. Now let's look up here at the Transform options. This determines the texture's position, which is defined relative to the mug. So we really need to see our mug in order to be able to apply its textures. We also don't need to type in any of these values manually. Let's use the Move and Scale tools we learned about in the last video to move a representation of the image directly in the 3D viewport. If we switch back to our items list, there's a folder that appears to be empty here called Texture Group. It's actually not empty at all. If we toggle it, we see these UI widgets turn on and off. This is because Texture Locator items are filtered by default. Some people find them to be distracting, but I think they're really useful. Let's turn them back on by selecting the Filter Item button here and toggle the Texture Locator option. Now, under that folder, we see all the textures that are in our scene. The ones we are particularly interested in is the Rocket Circle logo one. Making sure we are in Items mode, because we are indeed working on an item, select that layer, and now let's move it where we want the logo to appear on the mug. Press W for the Move tool and move it right here next to the mug. Now press E for Rotate. 
and let's rotate it this direction. If we were to first press down the control key, it will constrain our rotation to 15 degree increments, making it easier to hit in even 90 degrees. Now press R to scale it some. And finally, let's adjust the position a little more. Now if we look back at these properties here, we see they have all changed, but we didn't need to type anything in. It was all applied simply by manipulating the locator widget. That looks pretty good, but this repeating pattern is obviously wrong, so let's turn that off. Looking back at the properties, let's set the repeat option to edge for both directions. This means that whatever pixel is along the outer edge of the image will get repeated infinitely outward, giving us the single logo. Okay, that looks good. Let's turn on our other objects now and see where we're at. We can move our mug now out from under the coffee maker using the move tool. Press W. And obviously it's too big relative to the rest of the object, so let's scale it down a little bit too. Somewhere around 57% seems to be just about right. And let's rotate it some by pressing E. Okay, let's press F8 and see how the scene is shaping up. I'm really liking this now. I'm also noticing that our rocket logo is projecting all the way through our coffee mug, even onto the insides. So let's hide that by applying another surface just to the inside of the mug. Let's zoom into the mug really close and look to its inside. We need to make another selection to define just where that surface tag will be applied. Let's jump back to polygons mode to do that. If you happen to have older selections still active, you can simply mouse click away from the model onto a blank area to drop the active selection or simply press the escape key. Let's select these two adjoining polygons here toward the bottom, making sure they are side by side. I want to accurately select the entire ring of polygons connected to these two. This is called a loop selection and is a common task when modeling, so of course Moto has a shortcut to speed that up. The two polygons selected define the loop's direction. Now press the L key to actually select the ring. Now with that loop selected, I want to grow it larger. That is done with the shift and up arrow key. So press and hold the shift key and then press the up arrow on your keyboard consecutively. Each press grows your loop one more ring outward. And if we press it enough, we'll get up to the rim of our mug, selecting the entire inside. Just about there looks good. So let's press M again and define the inside here as our name. And make this color red. Uh, maybe make it a little dull. All right, press OK. And we have our completed coffee mug. Press F8 again to see how we look. I like it. Press F8 again to close a preview window. I want to adjust this coffee mug just a little bit more here. I'm thinking I'd like the scene to be a little more intimate. Let's focus in a little more to our coffee pouches and let's switch our view using the pie menu technique. Control spacebar to switch back to our camera view. Using the navigation technique we learned before, let's zoom in here and position our scene just like this. That's looking really nice now. It brings us closer to the product and it feels more cozy and warm. I think there's one more detail to fill out our scene to make it a little more personal. Let's add in a spoon using the same method we did for the coffee mug. Use import and select the basic spoon file and press OK. Okay, making sure we're in items mode, let's move the spoon with the move tool. 
and rotate. And we need to scale him some too. Now we need to be back in polygons mode, but clicking these buttons all the time gets tiring. Luckily, we can use a keyboard shortcut for these too. Pressing the number three gets us back into polygons mode. Let's double click again over our spoon and select all the polygons and press M to make the material tag. I want the spoon to be extra shiny like chrome, so for that we'll need to make the diffuse color gray, make the diffuse amount really low like 10. This is because shiny surfaces don't reflect back their own color, they reflect the surroundings. And since we want it really shiny, let's make the specular amount 90. The general rule of thumb here is the diffuse amount and the specular amount should always add up to about 100. OK, press OK. Press F8 again, and we'll get another look at our scene. The spoon is still too rough. Let's jump over to our shader tree and toggle our spoon material and take a look at its settings. What we need to do is reduce our roughness value to something like 5. This controls how shiny or dull the surfaces look. Shiny surfaces will almost always have a very low roughness value. That looks good. Let's save our scene by pressing Ctrl S. That completes this lesson. If you like, feel free to go in and do some scene cleanup, organizing and renaming the layers we imported. In this video, we learned how to import OBJ files and add material tags to them. I explained the basics of surfacing a model, and we even learned a little bit of how to apply an image using a texture locator. Join me in our next video where we'll wrap up our scene, adding a more interesting background using primitives and some drag and drop material presets.